Howdy, y'all. Recently, I made a model for Skynex that had this real fun line bowl effect. And so many y'all asked how I did it, so I figured I'd make a tutorial for you. Now, there's two ways we can go about doing this that I've found. We can either draw each frame into our PSD file for every layer, a method I like to call the traditional style, or we can create keyframes that warp the lines on each layer in a method I like to call the simplified style. There's benefits to both options and even to combining both methods, which is something I did on Skynexus. For example, traditional method can create more unique textures and features, while simplified method will make it more resource friendly by keeping the amount of layers needed to a minimum. With both of these methods, you'll want to use at least three frames of animation to achieve this effect, meaning you'll want the lines to have at least three distinct shapes in the animation. So without further ado, let's jump right into this. All right, so this right here is Tater Bill. He's gonna be our testing dummy for the day. I like to keep all my animations in their own, like all my animation parameters in their own folder, just in case I got a lot going on. So I highly recommend you do that so you can find it quickly. Set up your parameter here. You can call it whatever you want. I choose to call it sketchy. You can call it sketchy, line bull, call it whatever you need to so that you know what it is. So I'm gonna put the minimum at zero, the default at zero, and the maximum at two. Now I have the maximum at two because I got three frames of animation and I'm gonna have it showing on zero, one, two, right? So if you got five frames of animation, then you'd make the maximum six and so on and so forth. Now, we're gonna make sure we click on this little box here for blend shape. Having this as a blend shape is gonna save you a world of trouble later on, just trust me. So just go ahead and click on that and click okay. Now the reason I said to put this all on a blend shape is because the mouth particularly, and the eyes particularly, are gonna be real annoying to try to edit if this is a regular uh, parameter. So now, if we click on, you know, these eyeballs, which when you're editing these, make sure you're highlighting all of them and editing them all together. Otherwise, you're gonna have a world of hurt trying to do each and every single one individually. So I always just kinda click and drag all of them when I go to make edits. And so like, if I wanted to make the eyes close, which these are all on the same layer. If you were doing it different, you'd want to make sure the left is doing one thing, the right's the other, you know. But for the sake of this tutorial. So now if I do like that, you know, all of these layers are blinking. So no matter which form I'm on, they're moving. And I also don't have to worry about changing the opacity on every single blend shape on account of this is, on every single key form on this parameter on account of this is a blend shape so no matter what we do up here this will always hold true like it's a deformer so definitely want to keep this on a blend shape same thing with the mouth now i know the mouse can be a bit more uh complicated when it comes to animating them so if we highlight all of the mouths here and we click on our uh deform path editor which is my favorite way of animating mouths for vtuber models and if you ain't using this method i highly highly suggest that you do we click on that if as long as you got all the mouths so this is like my top line for example as long as you've got all of them clicked on and highlighted when you set down the deformer path it will edit all three of them now a word of the wise do not try to edit on a blend shape what do i mean by that if you try to edit on a blend shape you're gonna have some problems so for example if we go to the mouth here and let's just say we want to do our mouth forms right so we want to just make a nice little smile this looks great right we're smiling we're doing something if for some reason you have this clicked on sketchy instead of on mouth forms if you were messing around you wanted to see something and you left it here and you go to try to edit something over here it's going to attack you where to go i don't know <laughs> but it is going to attack you it will jump scare the ever living nothing out of you so just just be aware of that make sure you're clicked on that and make sure this is set all the way back to zero otherwise it's gonna be it's gonna be mad at you it's just it ain't gonna be happy with you so just you know keep that in mind that this needs to be set all the way to zero before you can edit anything um using deform paths so now on each of these key forms we are gonna make it so that only one of every layer is visible so a quick way to do that is to click on like these bottom right here since this is a simple model I can just click on each of the bottom ones I add a parameter here I'm just gonna add three like that on the first one it's gonna be at a hundred so we'll leave it there on the middle we're gonna change these to zero 
and on the last we're going to change these to zero now let's do it again on the middle ones we're going to click on there we're going to add three keyforms on the first one now we're going to make this zero on the middle keep it at 100 and on the last put it down to zero one more time these top three here add their key three key forms on the first one we're going to put it to zero on the second one also going to put it at zero and that last one we're going to keep it at 100 now what we've done here is made each of these frames only show on one key form so if we click on it you can see we've only got one key form showing at a time we've only got one layer showing at a time now we're going to click on this drop down menu up here click on animation we got tater bill staring at us over here we're going to go ahead and go to this top left corner where our uh, project file is we're going to click and drag it over to this big empty space down here and go ahead and drop it it's going to give you a number of options here we're just going to leave it on that first one that says sdk unity and click ok now tater bill is real up close and personal right now so we're just going to back out real quick going to click on them hold alt and shift and then click on any one of these little dots on the outside bounding box to scale them down perfect that's just so that we can see what we're doing now right here on this little blue line we're going to click down and then click on live 2d parameters click the down arrow and find your animation folder in your animation uh, parameter all right, so the way I like to do this, I like to set a keyframe on every five frames. That's the sweet spot that I found is what works best for me. If you want it to move faster, make them closer. If you want it to move slower, make them further apart. So we're just gonna go ahead. I right click on this little spot here so that we can set a keyform. Set keyframe on our timeline. And then these little lines are here at every five frames. So that's very helpful. So I just kind of push it over at every five frames and add a little dot and then we're gonna have four frames in our animation because we got three uh, frames of animation and we want it to loop so that last frame needs to be the same as the first frame so for us we got three frames of animation so we should have four on our timeline if you've got six frames of animation you should have seven on your timeline so on and so forth that way that your animation is looping now we're just going to click and drag this so we can scale out and see our whole project. We're going to change the duration and everything. If you make sure your hand, uh, your cursor turns into a hand, it'll drag both of these over. So we're going to drag both of these over to the last frame and then click and drag this. Oop. Click and drag this to also line up. So everything should be lined up on that last frame. Now if you click this little play button, it'll play our animation. And you're going to be like, now, hold on, Clover, this ain't what I was looking for. Why is it flashing disco lights? This is not what I wanted. You said you could make a sketchy line boil effect. This ain't it. Well, hold on, hold your horses. Go ahead and click on this graph right up here, this little graph icon. And you see what we've got here is a Bezier curve. It's important to understand what this is and what this means. A Bezier curve is going to ease your way from one keyframe to the next nice and slow and ease it through to make it seem seamless this is just a real seamless animation we don't want that we want a stop motion just very abrupt animation style in order to achieve that we're just going to go ahead and grab all these we're just going to highlight all that and then up here we're going to click on step interpolation it looks like literally like like steps like stairs and what this does is exactly what it sounds like it's like you're going from one frame to the next like you're climbing stairs bam 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 there's no easing about it so now when we click play you'll see we've got a very choppy stop motion kind of style effect and that's all thanks to our buddy step interpolation so we did it that's pretty much all there is to it when it comes to the traditional way of stacking frames okay so for the simplified style this is helpful if you're if you are um trying to be conservative with your resources and not have so many layers that you want to put in into a texture file or maybe your client or you or your client are looking to rig this sort of effect but the artist involved didn't make enough layers um and you're trying to find a way or like a workaround for that well this is how you would do that again i still recommend that your sketchy is on a blend shape it'll save you so much time um so much heartache when you're trying to edit uh mouths and stuff especially if you're trying to give it that line wobble effect so just go ahead. I'm just going to show y'all with the body. I ain't going to do everything. Just going to show y'all with the body. 
So I got my body layer selected. I'm gonna go ahead and click on these three dots because we're just gonna make the three lines. Um, we're just gonna make the three frames. So on the first one, we keep it default. We ain't need, we ain't need to do nothing with that. On the second one here, I'm gonna grab my brush tool. Now this is a standard um, art mesh. And if we want more like detailed uh, wib wiggle wobbles, then we would need to add more meshing on here. But I'm just gonna show y'all what this looks like with just a standard art mesh. I didn't make this, it's just whatever the system gave me, right? So we're gonna take this tool, I'm gonna make it a little smaller. And I'm just gonna go around and kinda just wiggle this stuff around a little bit. So I'm gonna push this down here and maybe pull this out a little bit there. And kind of just do like that. The more, um, the more you push stuff around, the more choppy it'll look. So depending on the vibe you're going for, just kind of keep in mind, like, do I want a drastic line boil or do I want something just real, real fine and, um, crafty. So just kind of keep that in mind. And then the last one, what I like to do is I try to... I'll edit one like this, and then I will copy this layer. So I'll do control shift C, then go over to this frame and control shift V so that now these both look exactly the same. And then I will go back and forth from the last frame to the first frame. So like, let's say, let, let's look right here. We'll look right here, right? When we go to the first frame, we see how it kind of goes back up. So on this frame, I'm gonna attempt to just kind of bring it back to the original frame, but not like completely. And I'm gonna do that for like this whole mesh so that it just kind of gives it a more seamless look when the lines are boiling. So we're gonna do that for this whole like area basically. So we see where this is at. This needs to come up a little bit. Ooh. I'm looking right here now. We see how that kind of comes out. So I'm just gonna push it back in. I'm gonna look right here now. It goes in, so I'm gonna pull it out. I'm looking right here it goes out so I'm gonna push it in we just keep doing that for the entire process Okay, so I think I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take a look at it and see. Now we set this up earlier, so I'm just gonna keep it here. Let's see how that looks. And here's our little wiggly wobbly guy. I'm gonna pull this down so I can really just look at him. And if there's any parts on here that you don't like that you think are too jittery or not jittery enough, like, Right here, we can kind of see it kind of bump out a bit too, maybe too much, maybe not. Depends on what you're looking for. Like these two areas bump out a lot. Whereas, uh oh, whereas this side don't hardly move at all. So if you wanted to like, you know, maybe calm this side down, or maybe if you wanted this side to wiggle just as much as that side, all you gotta do is figure out which frame is doing that. So like we see it's actually this middle frame that has so much wiggle to it, right? So, we could go, we would go back in here, go to that middle frame and just calm them down a little bit. So like we just kind of push that in a little bit, push that in a little bit, right? Then we go back to our animation and we see that's calmed down some. This is still kind of crazy, but you, you get the idea. Like the top has calmed down quite a bit. So that's kind of, you, there, you might take a little bit of trial and error to get the effect that you want doing it the simplified way, but it is in the end more uh, resource efficient and also makes it so that if you're missing the art for that, look but you really want that look or your client really wants that look then you can still achieve that without having to bug an artist about it so once you've finished your uh, animation and you've got it to your liking you need to go up to file and click export for runtime while you're in the animation tab and then click on export motion file it'll come up with a couple of pop-ups everything just the way it is is perfect um and click ok um, and just go ahead and drop that in whatever folder that you're going to remember. Just drop it in with your model files once it's all exported and everything. Give it a name like uh, idle or sketchy motion or whatever you want, right? And then once you're in VTube Studios, I didn't export my potato, so I'm just going to show you using Sky Nexus here. But click on the little cog wheel, 
go over to model settings and then right here in idle animation just click on that sketchy animation or whatever you named it um, to get the lines moving because if you don't do that then your lines as you can see they ain't, they ain't wobbling they ain't gonna be doing nothing so make sure you just get that set up like that and uh yeah they'll be all ready to rock and roll that is pretty much it if y'all got any questions comments concerns please feel free to comment down below and i'll do my best to answer all the questions you have and if this tutorial was helpful and you ain't already subscribing make sure you do subscribe and click like and all that good stuff and uh <laughs> yeah thank y'all so much for watching and i'll see y'all next time